hello everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Anabaptist Perspectives. I'm here with Melvin Lehman, and you've been a teacher here at Faith Builders Educational Program for, oh, it's more than 20 years now, isn't 23 it? 23 years. 23 years. Okay. So, and, and something that's been really um, big for Mennonite culture, mm -hmm. I guess more historically, but even now, is our love of farming mm -hmm. um, and working you know, with our hands mm -hmm. in, in very practical things. Um, and this episode is going to kind of dive into a little bit of that's kind of changing now. Uh -huh. um, and I understand you have a farm, so or you've done a lot of farming in your history. So let's just, yeah, let's just jump into that. I mean, we're transitioning more into conventional, I guess you could call them conventional forms of income. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. the history of Mennonites tending to lean towards farm, farms in the past? Uh -huh. Uh, well, first, let me thank you for inviting me here to talk a little bit. Uh, you, you do push my buttons with this, uh, <laughs> uh, this question, sure. that's for sure. sure. Uh, so, uh, yes, I've watched this transition, been a part of it, really. Okay. Uh, grew up on a dairy farm myself. Um, and the transitions that have happened, I think, in the last couple of years, the last couple of years, last two, three decades, or maybe uh, first has been the movement it, from the farm, from agricultural related things to non-agricultural things. Normally, uh, either businesses or semi-professional work, uh, skills related a lot of times, uh, or even professional work. And those, mm. those proportions have been changing uh, all along. But not only that transition, but transition within farming itself. It's done differently now than what it was done okay. when I was a youngster. Uh, and, and I think that is more significant than some have thought of. So uh, this would be some things that I would uh, just observe right up front about this. Maybe uh, a few statistics on it, for example. Uh, my, the church I grew up in, uh, when I was... 10 years old, if you would have asked for a raise of hands of the families that were either directly involved in agriculture or at least right next to it, maybe in a feed mill or something like that, oh, sure. yeah. uh, would have easily been 60, 70 percent. Really? Yes. Wow. And where would have this been? Where uh, this is in Chambersburg. Chambersburg, okay. Uh, and, and mostly dairy farming. Huh. Um, if you were to ask the same question today in that congregation have them raise their hands, it couldn't be more than 10%. And a likely more five, six, seven, eight percent, I would guess, are, are uh, either directly in agriculture or right next door to it. So that's just one congregation. I know a relatively narrow perspective, but I gather it's pretty typical, uh, at least here in the East across the, the board that there's been that kind of shift just in 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. May I say something? Yeah, no, uh, go, yeah. I, I want to make it clear that I don't feel just all negative about all of this change. Uh, I, I think there's significant changes. Mm -hmm. And I think intelligent people pay attention to what's happening and they make the appropriate changes, their core values and core understandings and so on. My fear is that this just happens and things change mm. and uh, problems arise. We don't quite understand them. If we would work on, uh, on looking at the aspects of what's involved with this kind of change, things helpful. Mm -hmm. well, and, and that's kind of the next question, really. How is this going to affect hmm. you know, our, our culture, our, the, you know, the way really how we just do life because yeah this is a I mean I know my my dad is the same same thing like growing up he was on the farm and then mm -hmm. you know when he when he uh, got married and whatever he started his own business you know doing construction or masonry and now mm -hmm. we build roof trusses mm -hmm. a subtle shift sure but it is a shift and it mm -hmm. will have effects mm -hmm. what what's this doing to the next generation well first of all uh, this the shift has has contributed to some of the fragmentation in, in our circles. Mm. Uh, don't hear me blaming it and saying that's the problem. Yeah, but hear me yeah. saying it's contributed to it. Why? Well, even the generation before me farmed together more than what m my parents did. For mm. example, the th if you were going to thresh your grain, well, that's four or five, six families 
uh, that get together for a day, two days, a week, two weeks, whatever, uh, as they thresh each other's uh, wheat and, and so on. And this was largely the agricultural community governed the church community in the sense of time and place and what we're doing today and what we're doing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it was much more that they had to do together as a group. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, again, with my com earlier comments that uh, we, we can't just box all this into a bad box and say it's all a bad thing. but without some thought as the movement away from the farm happened, well, that natural integration of society began to, to come apart at the seams yeah. uh, without people really thinking about, oh, okay, now wait a minute, how do we actually keep this together? Mm -hmm. So that'd be, that's the first point I'd make, just a certain fragmentation. It's contributed some to the acculturation. I, and again, depending on your perspective, well, maybe maybe the acculturation was good. So German language to English language, uh, rubbing shoulders with their neighbors and in the, uh, in the yeah. workplace and all that. I, there, of course, is a good side to that, something that should happen. There is a side to it that we've struggled with as a people, as most of us know. So the movement has contributed there a bit. Uh, maybe one that is, uh, I think, maybe more more uh, pertinent is less dad presence. Ooh, okay. uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, it doesn't matter how you cut it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the family farm I grew up on, uh, it was almost 24 seven that I yeah. had dad presence. Okay, so we worked together, you know, him in his bib overalls and all of this, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, we're out there doing our thing. <laughs> Uh, but the guy, it, my father-in-law was a trucker. And uh, he says today that the worst thing that happened was I was away from home too much, too much of the time. Yeah. And uh, even though he was aware of it, still there was, there was a cost here. There was a price that he paid for that lessening dad presence. Uh, again, my question really is not, okay, let's not just everybody go back to the farm to straighten this up. But, okay, so what are we doing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, about that one truth that just is the, the, the one fact? You're not going to have dad there as much as we did growing, as I did at least, mm -hmm. growing up on the farm that I grew up on. I mentioned that, I keep saying the farm I grew up on. Mm -hmm. Why do I say that? Well, okay, just dad presence alone. Farming has transitioned enough now that even there it's faltering, I think. Okay. So for example, uh, out of my family, the Lehman family in the Chambersburg area, there's, most of them don't farm anymore. The one who does that I'm thinking of, my nephew, a uh, fine man, a uh, good man. And, but uh, he, <laughs> uh, he hires Mexicans to do his milking. Okay. Not all the time, but some of the time. My dad would have never done that. Hmm. Absolutely not. I, I mean, I got my education from my dad, my political orientation and all that stuff, <laughs> theological <laughs> orientation, uh, milking in a stable, uh, a, a, not, not a uh, uh, milking parlor, but uh, d d stanchions and uh, cows facing away from a walkway, and, you know, mm -hmm. putting milkers on and off. And this is every morning and this is mm -hmm. every evening, seven days a week. But we wouldn't think of having somebody else milk the cows. It was something, your, your dad wanted you to do this, like as in it was a family thing. I don't know if he even wanted it to. It, it just, <laughs> that's what we that's did. That's just what you did. Just you didn't we did. hire someone else. No, you did it as a family. That so, is really interesting. So that meant an hour and a half to two hours every morning, yeah. every evening, yeah. milking cows and talking about life and the neighbors. Well, that's powerful. And, uh, that is. That's okay, really my nephew will be missing that. Mm -hmm. uh, don't hear me criticizing him, just talking right, a little right. bit about some of the changes mm -hmm. just in farming methods. Yeah. So it's not just the movement from farm to city or to urban life, it's, it's the changes within farming itself that I, I think may affect us more than what we think they do. But come, circling back now, my point was, 
lessening dad presence yeah. is a yeah. is is a phenomena that is a part of this. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it's a reality that, that is, is here and is happening, whether we face it or not. Exactly. You know, and, and at least just being aware of these things. And this is, where, this is really good for me, understanding, okay, this is a little bit how it was, say, mm -hmm. for my family. You know, that's what dad would have grown up with, and now I don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, it doesn't change reality, but it does help me understand a little better, yeah. Really, then, what's the future? I mean, <laughs> I mean, nobody knows the future, but mm -hmm. this trend is definitely it doesn't look like it's going to change. Um, we're integrating into a lot more mainstream business, as it were, or even like you mentioned, urban settings. Yeah. Um, what's it going to look like 20 years from now uh, for for the Mennonites? I have four things that I would suggest that we need to be thinking about as we move into the future. Mm -hmm. So you already mentioned community solidarity, strong work ethic very much associated yeah. with the with the uh, with the farm uh, strength and family dad presence the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof uh, the point there that I just would want to touch on just briefly is there is something about the connection to earth <laughs> mm. that when you disconnect that you disconnect a reality that uh, that I think has been helpful in the past Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what we're struggling against, though, or some of the downsides of being on the farm, I should say, was it did tend toward isolationism. Uh, we did become the quiet in the land, and you can develop tunnel vision. I'm just saying a few things about yeah. that I would have experienced growing up that uh, needed some correction. Mm -hmm. Now, pushing ahead, though, to your question there of, so what should we be looking at here in the future? How, how does this all... Okay, so mm -hmm. that's the deal. Yeah. Now what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm understanding your question. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, number one, develop models and strategies for sustainable small scale farming. Hmm. I, I think we've given up on it too quickly. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. okay. Now, you should not misunderstand me to uh -huh. say that I think, okay, let's all get back on the farm. That's not my point. Sure. My point is we have obviously experienced some some real value added things from farming mm -hmm. well why just give up because it's too expensive it's too much this it's too much that or whatever but why mm -hmm. not uh, why not explore small scale strategies and, and, and make it and make farming more accessible to more people Mm -hmm. um, I almost had suggested to you that we should film this uh, up at my little farm because it's oh. one of the reasons I have that little place uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> is just to be, d d d explore a few things. Well, what could you do? What, what are some mm -hmm. possibilities? For example, I have grass-fed beef, okay. grass only. Okay, d d why am I doing that? Well, a couple of things that just fits with today's cultural atmosphere is, you know, the health thing and mm -hmm. and uh, food and all of that and it's cheap you when I say it's cheap you can you can raise an animal with far less uh, in a cash investment if you're okay. just doing grass fed yeah. okay now if you're gonna feed them corn you're gonna fatten them fast and all that well uh, that changes the equation yeah. yeah so that's what I mean by develop models and mm -hmm. strategies for sustainable small-scale farming Hmm. And it might even include that a guy is a school teacher and a farmer. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, okay, yeah, because you teach here yeah. a lot, yeah. and yet you have a farm, right? right? So, yeah. wow, well, okay, that would be really fun to go get some shots down there. And I would just mention a few other things in this area, for example, uh, uh, logging and woods and, mm -hmm. farm, uh, and uh, uh, trees, and a big thing. Uh, I didn't grow up with that. Mm -hmm. But I love fiddling with it. We're doing maple syrup. Oh, fun. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, and yeah. so here again, there are ways to actually make a living off the land that, that most of our people have not explored. Hmm. They, they've, been, yeah. they've been doing other things. So, and maybe we should start looking into the advantages of doing that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Hmm. I think it may even be a ministry to our world. It, it, let me explain. One thing that has bothered me is that we buy quickly, uh, Mennonites have bought quickly into modern farming methods, uh, more fertilizers, more pesticides, more this, more that, more the other mm -hmm. thing, in spite of uh, mounting evidence that this is problematic. 
uh, we ought to be leaders in the field of saying, well, what are the alternative ways of doing this and how, yeah. can, we, how can we do it without becoming big businesses that almost nobody can access anyway? Yeah, so, okay. I, I, yeah, I, I like that. Like, it's almost like, really, because I mean, I know some, some of my friends that, that still farm and, and so forth, and it's so commercialized and such a so big scale, which, you know, there are a lot of people in the world feed, but, yep. but I, yeah, your approach is like, let's, let's just reverse engineer this and go the other direction. I don't know. Yeah, it's That's really right. Well, and I wonder if we would not be able to get more productivity from the land over the long haul. Oh. Hmm. Keep it small enough that the family could actually run it. You, 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 mm -hmm. you didn't have to go out and hire so many people in order to actually make this work. Um, I don't know. I have some vision there for it. It, it feels yeah. to me as though we have to do some innovative work there. Yeah. But that's one thing. A second thing is uh, is encourage small businesses, which our people have almost. Yeah. Um, naturally move that direction. Uh, but we should find ways to actually encourage it, I think. So my dad's, I, I'm, I'm one of six boys mm -hmm. and seven girls in our family. <laughs> uh, and I remember my dad saying when I was just, oh, I don't know, maybe a 12 year old, he said, hey, you know, boys, you can't all farm. Mm -hmm. At least not, he didn't add this to it, but I'm adding to it, at least not on the scale he was farming. Uh, okay, this is not, so, some of you are going to have to do something else. He thought I should be a mechanic, which is what I did go and do actually for a while. Okay. Uh, okay, now so I'm saying encourage small businesses because the core values of farming, whatever they were, if we could get our fingers on them and say, well, they were these, one, two, three, and four. Yeah, we've talked about them a little bit here, but there are more that sure. we could explore. They, they could probably be captured the easiest in small businesses or, or, or passed on to the next okay. generation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than say even a professional, professional career. I'm not opposed to a professional career, but it's hard to actually see the ideals that came off the farm coming to fruition in a highly professionalized uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It could be done and is done sometimes, but uh, I would say encourage small businesses. Um, and uh, incidentally, I'm, I'm so delighted that uh, Anabaptist Financial, uh, uh -huh. this would be an example of encouraging it. You actually create the forums, the money flows that make it possible. And you have, you have a Mennonite organization that is actually, they're hard at work trying to make this happen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. Third, I take agricultural, uh, and business to the city. Ooh, fun. okay. This yeah. is really kind of brand new, and I know it's cutting edge. Mm -hmm. But some of my friends, uh, right in this area here, uh, and I'll mention one by name, Kevin Schenk from sure. uh, York, okay. yeah. Yeah. Uh, has special interest in like aquaponics and uh, no other, way. other oh, okay. uh, ways of actually taking very different forms of farming, but uh, forming, farming into the city. Huh. And uh, that fascinates me. It's like, well, yeah. okay, uh, why not? Uh, why not huh. find ways of actually creating food productivity right in town? Mm -hmm. uh, there are limits here, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but why not explore the limits? Yeah. Uh, it seems to me. So uh, that one fascinates me, and I think we should, I think we should pursue it. It really, I, I don't have opposition of the younger generation's interest in city life. They have to think carefully about the gains and the losses. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there always are gains and losses, so you, you can't fix everything. Right. But my suggestion here is, well, perhaps there's something to be gained by actually carrying some of our natural instinctive uh, actions in respect to farming right mm -hmm. into the city. Mm -hmm. That is really <laughs> genius though, because like there could be, basically what you're advocating here is 
look, there were a lot of benefits that we got from this kind of lifestyle. So we're not throw, we're not saying all these new things are bad, That's but right. let's try to get those benefits exactly. from this lifestyle that, that we are losing right. and apply it to the new. Yeah, just apply it to the new. Yeah. That's best, yeah. yeah. And now that's gonna take a lot of work. It's gonna oh, you have to be really uh, deliberate, uh, but and you'll lose some money off and on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, maybe, maybe, maybe there's uh, maybe there's a future there for that. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I think there is, uh, and I would encourage some some entrepreneurs to to pursue it. That and is, the fourth one I have is. Really is uh, it, it, this is beyond the farm now, so what do we need to do? Well, uh, integrate professionals into community culture. So I gave okay. a little bit of an okay. array there, of, so from farm to trades to business to semi-professional to professional. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that kind of movement. Well, what about the professionals? Yeah. What I hear from them, doctors and nurses and, and uh, so on, is I hear from them that in the typical Mennonite community, particularly if it's agricultural, <laughs> they're, uh, they feel like they're at sea. They're, 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 uh, uh -huh. I think more effort needs to be made to, to integrate the professional into the, whether it's an agricultural community or whatever, mm -hmm. um, feels to me as though we don't do really well there. That's, yeah, and that's one, and, and we haven't done an episode on this, but I, I would love to do an episode on um, the community uh -huh. uh, mindset of Mennonites and how, you know, that is in danger, and it, it, it's always in a way being attacked, um, mm -hmm. but I think now more than ever, especially with, you know, the new professional yeah. occupations that are yeah. coming into our circles, like, those are good things, but um, there's strengths in our community, too. That's right. Yeah. And I'm sure there's many, many, many other things that could be considered for next steps. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the kind of the summary I, I wrote in my paper is identify core values and promote them through these avenues. Mm -hmm. Find ways to actually carry them forward generationally. And mm -hmm. uh, to take the work ethic, for example. Mm -hmm. It was as natural as could be on the farm. Uh, that just was, mm -hmm. it's life. It's not as natural to create that same sense of just grit, determination mm -hmm. for the dad who is a professional nurse. He comes home, evenings are free. Mm -hmm. They're not free, I know, but they feel more free. And there's more leisure time. And so in my, just in my generation, I did to just give one example here, I saw the culture change in the sense that, uh, say, uh, playing softball on a Wednesday evening or a Thursday mm -hmm. evening or volleyball or whatever. My dad would have said, you're gonna what? Mean there's hate on load. What do, you, mm -hmm. what do you mean you're playing volleyball this evening? Well, that's changed dramatically. Wow. And I'm not crying mm -hmm. sour grapes so much as just saying, well, that has been a change. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's harder to maintain that sturdy work ethic that just was naturally a part of the farm. Yeah. I use that as one example of a core value that we should have put our finger on it and mm -hmm. ask ourselves, how do we carry it forward, whether we're professionals or whatever. Hmm. That sums it up really well. I mean, it's, we've got, um, you know, each generation faces its That's unique right. challenges, but this feels like, um, feels very much like a transition generation. Uh -huh. it, it really does. does. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll see. I guess we can come back in 20 years and do this interview, and we'll we'll look back at this and see how right we were or how wrong we were. And I will be 81, <laughs> and you should know that my wife's greatest fear is that I will grow old and senile and won't know it, and I'll be d d doing interviews and teaching and doing this and that, and everybody will say, "What's?" <laughs> so you can try. We can try. <laughs> wow. Uh, thank you very much for being on You're this welcome. episode. That, that was very, very interesting because like for myself personally, I, I was never in the agricultural scene uh -huh. and, and I love hearing that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot to think about. And yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Um, and if, if you like what you see, you have questions, just put a comment in. Um, and, or if there's maybe a topic you like us to cover next, um, just let us know and, and we'll, we'll see about doing that. So yeah, we have new videos each week, so come back if you wanna see more stuff like this and uh, we'll see you guys in the, in the next video.